Model steam engines for beginners. This is part 14. Modifying a commercial steam blower for different model locomotives. This is a Pinnacle 12 volt DC steam raising blower. I'll say straight away that you only need one of these if you're using solid fuel to fire your boiler. This type of blower fits on the chimney and it's actually a sucker really. It sucks the air through the boiler and from underneath the fire grate to pass more oxygen over the fire. Recently I've been carrying out a major restoration on a very old Bassett Lowe traction engine and this was the blower that my customer had bought to raise steam. And he wants me to modify it so it fits in the top of the chimney. As you can see it's a bit too big for this. So I need to make an adapter that goes down into the chimney. And the ball of the chimney tube, even though it looks tapered, is one inch in diameter. Because the chimney has a central tube that is parallel. On top of the chimney fits this really nice brass cap. And it's very convenient because you can lift it off to clean it and then put it back on. The only problem I can see, if I make an adapter for the blower to go down inside the chimney, when you lift the blower off, you're likely to lift the chimney's top cap off, which will then fall off the blower and damage the engine's paintwork or worse. I think it's a much better idea to raise the steam without the cap on and then fit the cap once the blower's been removed. I'm going to make an adapter using this piece of brass that will make it so that the blower sits on top of the chimney. As you can see, the brass is currently too big. The chimney is one inch in diameter, and here I'm checking what the diameter is in the hole in the blower. For this job, I'm using my digital caliper, and as you can see, the hole in the blower is slightly less than one inch. So I need to turn one end of this piece of brass to fit into the blower, and the other end to fit the chimney. This is a very simple plain turning job. One end of the piece of brass bar needs to be turned to exactly one inch in diameter. I'm turning the part that fits down into the chimney first. Sometimes when I make these videos, I lose concentration. I start to concentrate too much on the photographic process. That's my excuse anyway, and I'm sticking to it. I was being a bit too ambitious, and the first piece of brass that I turned was slightly undersized. But luckily, I turned it to the size of the blower, purely by chance. I think it's called serendipity, or a happy accident. I decided to make the chimney end of the adapter, which is currently outermost in the chuck, a good fit in the chimney for part of the way, but taper the end so that it would be able to be fitted in a smaller locomotive chimney as well. In this clip I'm rough cutting the piece of brass, and very shortly I'll be taking a very fine cut to make this part just a tiny amount under one inch in diameter. And here is the final one inch diameter cut. As you can see, it's not a rough cut, so it's giving quite a good finish. And when I check the part using my digital caliper, it's very much in tolerance. A good fit. In this clip, I'm starting the tapering process. I'm turning a taper on the brass, and once this is finished, it will be able to fit in even smaller chimneys than one inch. And also, because the part is tapered, it's easy to locate it in the one inch diameter chimney. To turn a taper on this part, the lathe saddle is locked in position to the bed, and I've rotated the position of the top slide. So now, provided I only operate the handle of the top slide, it's possible to turn a taper on the work as you see here. In order to make a good job of this blower adapter, it does actually need a hole in the middle. So first of all, as always, I use a centre drill. And you can see the effect of that here. I intend to drill all the way through this part using this large twist drill. I'm going through first though using a smaller drill. It just makes it less like hard work. If I go straight through with the large drill, it takes a lot of pressure to push it through the work. But now there's a hole down the middle. I can put the lathe in back gear and I can drill a large hole all the way through with comparative ease. Before I fix this into the blower, it's a good idea to test it and it fits very well. But I still think it's a better idea to take off the polished part. And once this adapter is fitted into the blower, the entire assembly can sit in the top of the chimney. Steam can be raised and very quickly the top can be replaced. But as you can see, the top is moving as I push the adapter in and out and it's very clean at the moment. Once it gets gummed up with oil and soot, I really am thinking that removing the blower is very likely to remove the brass cap too. The final job is to clean down the hole in the centre of the blower using a piece of Scotch-Brite, 
then apply some Loctite 603 to the piece of brass, push it into the hole and just let it cure. The heat of steam raising is nowhere near hot enough to disturb the Loctite bond. And not wishing to repeat myself too much, I think that before raising steam, it's a good idea to take the top cap off. And that's about it. The blower fits the chimney, so I'll take it off and put it back in the box. Complete with the other adapter that was supplied with the blower to accommodate larger diameter chimneys. The next time you see this blower, it will be sat in the top of the traction engine's chimney when I perform the steam test. And that's the end of this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.